Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be playing another game of League of Legends at the Platinum 5 level. This is going to be patch 3.13, and we're going to try to carry a support. So let's go ahead and get in there. <clears throat> so if you've been following my channel, and I know there's not a ton of you that have been following it for League of Legends, there's far more Warhammer fans here, but I'm trying to build the League of Legends community as well. If you followed that, you've probably noticed that I did... Or I mentioned that I did go on a lost streak um, about a week ago or so. So you can kind of see here, lost <laughs> quite a few games. Now some of these are normals as well, just playing with friends. But I went on a lost streak. But I just got it together. I thought about, reflected on um, why I was losing, how I could improve it. And <clears throat> now I've won 7 out of 10, my Tom Kinch game. So I'm 70% this week. So don't be discouraged. Um... If you go on lost streaks, just try to figure out how to stop it. Because, and it's it's hard when you go on lost streaks because psychology drops. And as I've said before, the psychology is really one of the most important factors to winning. Just try, not only just staying positive for yourself, but also figuring out how to keep other people positive. And when you go on a lost streak, even if you think you're not tilting, even if you're like, oh, I'm fine you can still kind of feel it. You can feel yourself getting a little bit negative. Um, you know, just responding a little too much to situations. So, and I forgot which episode it is, because I just recently renamed all of the episodes, too, to keep them a little more consistent, a little easier to follow. Um, so now with each support, I just have a number for the season. So it's just much easier. Because before I was doing it by patch, where it would be, you know, patch 6.13, Tom Kench game number three, or something like that. 6.4, it'd start over at, you know, Tom Kench, patch 6.14, number one. But then I just figured that'd get really confusing for you guys, so I just went ahead and renamed all of them. to where they just have a nice, consistent number, one through whatever we get to by the end of the season. So you can just tune in and find out what it is. Um, I could add in what the matchups are if you guys would like for me to do that. That's something that I've considered if you want me to talk about um, who's on which team or whatever. Uh, let me see. I guess I'll just ban someone. I could at least mention the support matchup. So I could say, like, Von Kench versus Leona or something like that. I could put that somewhere in the description, maybe. But I'm not sure how useful that would be. Let me know in the comments if there's a way that I could differentiate myself and just let these episodes um, have different sorts of subtitles or something like that that would be useful for you. Because I could definitely do that. Just to add a little bit more identity to the episodes. Instead of it just being Tom Kinch, you know, number 14. I do mention what's in the post game, um, but I could also mention what's in the normal game. Maybe I'll do that. I think I'll go back through it when I say, like, game start. I'll just give just a couple of brief sentences about, like, what happens in the game. Just so that you guys, you know, can kind of see, like, if there's something dramatic. I don't know. I'll figure out some way to try to spice it up and differentiate it. Um, yeah, I still like Tom Kench. And if you're just joining me for the first time, the reason that I like Water Tom Kench is he bails the out your teammates the when they're out of position better than any other support. And that's the number one way that I lose right now, is teammates being out of position. So I have to do everything in my power to stop that. Because I think that I personally, for the most part, I mean, I obviously still make mistakes. Quite a few, <laughs> if you watch. But most of those are mechanical mistakes. I just, you know, I'll miss the tongue lash, or I will eat the wrong champion, or something like that. I think strategically, I'm usually pretty close to making the right call. I'm at least in the ballpark more often than I'm not, and more often than most of my teammates are, it seems. So, make sure I change my things here. What? Okay, so I guess they've got a brand support. So we'll go Tom Kinch, MR, Alistar, and what I like, I like getting the health. As I explained in the last video, this is something that I don't see a lot of people do. They'll usually get Bond of Stone, but just think about it for a second. You'll get your max stacks of your health probably at 15 to 20 minutes. And your health is probably going to be, even if you get 
a lot of, you know, health items. Let's say you get Locket. Um, you get Locket, you get the health gold item, you stack that all the way up to tier um, 3, and you get another ruby crystal, and maybe you're building your way towards um, a Sunfire or something like that, which I wouldn't recommend <laughs> getting on a support. Um, you're still going to have less than 3,000 health probably as a support Tom Kench, and that extra 300 that you get from that mastery is 10% of 3,000 health. So even if you do have 3,000 health, it's still a 10% boost to your overall survivability, whereas Bond of Stone only reduces 4%. Now, yes, it does redirect 6% from a nearby ally to Tom Kench, but that isn't mitigation. That's just redirection. And you already have heavy mitigation. You eat them. That's 100% mitigation. Um, well, unless they have a dot on them or something like that. But the bottom line is the Bond of Stone only gives you 4% overall mitigation. Are we really against a brand? Yeah. Um... I, can't, I really want this refillable. I'm going to be a bit greedy and get the refillable. Just to save a little cash. I should probably get three pots, but... I'm going to be a little bit greedy. We'll see if that ends up biting me. But, just to put a bow on what I was saying previously. Bond of Stone only gives you 4%. Extra survivability by the 4% damage mitigation. The health gives you an extra 10% survivability. And that's not even including the gray skin that you get off of having extra health. So, it is huge. I mean, it might be slightly less early in the game. Although, I don't know. You get 30 health really quickly. If you get 10 off of this and then 20 off your first wave in the first minute. So, that still is like 5% or so. Not quite 5%. Um... But it still is in the neighborhood of 4% even early in the game, so I just think it's vastly superior. Also, when you're sieging that extra health off of killing a, um, a siege minion, it doesn't happen a lot later in the game, but that little bit of extra healing is pretty nice. Okay, I'll take a little bit of damage for him. See, so yeah, I got the 10 off of that. Um, and some people ask, well, why do you start with Chomp? Um, I've had people ask me that. And the reason is, it's not because it's the most efficient at harass. It's because it helps the jungler out the most. And it's a huge boost for the jungler. Yeah, probably <laughs> shouldn't have done the refillable. Because he's just burning so much mana so early on me. I guess it's not even really that much, honestly. Spells just don't cost that much. So I need to chill for a little bit until I get gray skin. I was going to try to chomp something and throw it at him, but... Jeez, I'm getting hit by everything. My diet is expansively um... You know, I do need... I'm going to get Tongue Lash. I'm very tempted to get gray skin here just because I'm getting so beat up. <laughs> um... I just can't dodge that radius. So he's, so I notice he likes to put it behind me. So I need to start fading to the side. So if you notice how, try to take note of where people put skill shots. A lot of times they will try to lead you with them, and a popular place to lead is from behind. yet. So we did get a tongue hit on there. Yeah, I had to dodge that. Unfortunately. So I'm going to have to back as soon as I get one more hit here. So I definitely... Well, I'm not sure if I can back. Honestly. I guess I can stay. It's very dangerous. But they're pushing in, so might be able to stay. I would like to at least get 500 to get my health item to help stop the poke. On my first back. 
So yeah, I mean, Tom Kench is not the greatest into heavy poke. I didn't know what they were going to pick as their support. Just in general, if it's in the dark and I don't really know what's going on, I don't know what they're going to pick. Um, he's still a good pick. Like, and if I would have known what he was going to pick, what their lane would be, I probably would have done um, Nami. Nami would destroy Brand. Because she's got a heal, and she does similar harass. And she's got better CC. So that's fine. Brand is just kind of an early game bully. I mean, he's pretty strong in team fights too. But okay, so I can snag this. I think. So if you tongue and then W, um, then it does a little combo where you can eat minions. I wish you could do that with players that had three stacks on them. That would be awesome. Um, possibly overpowered. I probably don't want that. Then more people would pick Tom Kench. Um, you always want to think about that too when you're just like, oh man, I wish they need to buff my favorite champion. Well, the truth is if they buff your champion, then you may not get to play it because they'll always be banned or picked. You want champions that people, ideally, that people almost never play that are very good. Oh yeah, Lucian's falling pretty far behind, I think. What, 33 to... 26. That's not that far, considering what's going on in this lane. It's not great, obviously, but they're not crushing us as hard as they probably could. Um, and I guess I can go ahead and get a fairy charm just for more tongue lashes. You know, it only really costs you about 40 gold to get a fairy charm because you can always sell it back for 88, so don't forget that. Um, it's a really goofy item. On Tom, I'm not going to turn it into anything, but it's just for a little bit more harass. As once I get back, my tongue lash should be um, able to put up some decent damage on Brand. And I'll have uh, more effective health because I'll have the regeneration and they won't have any regen. I don't want Brand going back. Anything of death is deceitful. I'm gonna fade back over here, see if he'll start again. Give him a couple seconds and then try to get down here. Yeah, okay, good. So you got him to waste a lot of time. So he waited. Um, and now he's really far behind. So he wasn't able to go get a sight zone or anything. We got a heal. That's fine. Alright, so we got four people bottom. I refuse to succumb to culinary degradation. I totally forgot about Shen, too. I need to keep notes of keep note of globals like that a little bit better. They're probably going to drag him. Yeah, I mean, Victor should have known that. Well, he got a kill on him. Okay. Savor the misery. He should be able to kill me now. I don't know about all this. Yeah, okay, we can do it. Lucian's there, he's gonna kill her. Okay, good. TF doesn't have an ult anymore. As soon as he hooks, I think this should be fine. I just have to make sure I don't die, but I want to be here just to help. A little bit. Oh, I wasn't in range of the time lash, but that's okay. So I stalled him a little bit at Dragon, and yes, it was dangerous, um, but I was able to get a little bit more damage on Ash, and I kind of baited him into our jungle. I knew Nautilus was coming back, and I knew I had Flash, so a little on the dangerous side, but it worked out. I knew they would be low from Dragon. I just wanted to delay him as much as possible without getting caught, because they didn't have really heavy CC that was sitting there. If you noticed, um, 
now we it was just Ash, who's not level six, and Pantheon. Dang, they have three guys. <laughs> they have the three globals. They have Pantheon, Shin, and TF. So, yeah, we have to be really careful with globals. Just broadcasting and talking, I just haven't really taken note of these globals. And they have at least one, te two teleports. So they have, like, five globals. So. So, yeah, I mean, I haven't faced a global-heavy team in a while. I think TF is very good in this patch. Um, is expansively unique. Oh, he's level 6. Yeah, we gotta watch out for that. That's one of my weaknesses, too, is I don't respect the level 6. I just don't notice when they, like, quick turn level 6. If he gets hit with an arrow, that's fine. I just can't get hit with the arrow. Because I can eat him out of it. should have hit the E. I should have hit the E and exhausted faster. I just couldn't keep up with what was going on. It's just a little too slow on the draw. It's my first game of the day. It's pretty early in the morning. Old man reflexes here. Can't handle it. No true hunger can be defeated. I don't. Maybe I didn't have exhaust at the. I'll have to look. I know. I, I'm pretty sure I didn't have it when Brand was running down here. Um. I mean, yeah, we just can't really dive that far. Because we know there's at least one global coming in, if not two. So that's a thing you have to be aware of. Ash just does a ton of damage with her Q now, too. This, I mean, their comp's really good. Because I need an Aegis and I need a Frozen Heart, probably, for this. Victor coming down. Okay. We might be able to make a play. I still do have exhaust. Okay, we got a flash. That's good. I need to get more wards up here is what I need to do. They might get bottom actually, that's not really good, but I really want to control the river a little bit better. Ash doesn't have flash. This should certainly be a kill. Now 
Now we shall gluttonize. Another smack. The only Bran was over here. Yeah. Where's that TF old go? Gluttony is a Well, they're gonna kill him, I think. Oh my gosh, really? Kill him, kill him, kill him before Shen gets there. Oh my gosh. I think they can clean all this up. So I was hoping the exhaust would be enough, but Pantheon's just too strong right now. Ash is back. Yep. Yep. Tell me he can jump through, jump through. Um, An ally has been slain. Geez. It's dare. There's just so many globals, like we just can't do anything. We just can't make plays like that. Like, this is exactly like Darius is just getting destroyed. I mean, he, I haven't even seen him use teleport yet. I mean, I'm trying to blame Darius, but the truth is, we just can't count on Darius. Like, you can't count on people helping out. Like, you have to be able to identify. Every heart has its own hunger. You have to be able to identify, hey, they have a super global comp, so you can't basically do anything. Like, we need, I need to get Nautilus to ult more. Anything of death is deceitful. I mean, that's really what we need to do is... A depth of flavor is what I covet. I'm just gonna go ahead and check it again. My diet is expansively unique. Yeah, I mean they sh misery has a delectable taste. Can I actually get up there and get friends? Let him get him. Nice. Okay, good. Oh, dang. Nice. <laughs> we should 2v1 him down bottom. So we can play this global game, too. So I don't really know that I was needed. It probably was better if I, um... Just got metal. I'm gonna go ahead and get the stuff. They've got that, I think. Uh oh. Okay, fine. I guess I can stay on this. I thought they'd get it faster. I haven't really interacted with the new Rift Herald that much. A river and I am its king. Okay. I have um, that aren't easily pacified. Oh my gosh, seriously? <laughs> no true hunger can be abated. Oh, he's going for the execute. What a clown. Uh, this is probably warded. Uh, 
This guy thinks he's cool. It's fine. Um. He can't really 1v1 me. Um, all I had to do was just stall him and keep out of the fight at that point. Alright, so I definitely want this. And I need mobility right now, desperately. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on all over the map. A couple of pinks. Alright, here we go. Now this is where the globals get very dangerous though, because we're all kind of split up. So they could ult on all kinds of people. Every heart has its own They're very good at pit comps, but we should be able to beat them up. Yeah, Brand has kind of worthless items right now. He went for a tier. Probably could have gotten it. I don't know. I mean, I think getting that TF off the board. I mean, I could have sold with the TF. I'm, I'm pretty sure. It was just like one more chomp and a tongue away from that, so. Gluttony is impossible. So I need to come down here and stay with him because he's going to get ulted probably by something. Oh, I forgot that tower is still there, actually. Wow, okay. So I don't know where Brand is. Fight breaks out like it is right now. Okay, great. Uh, we don't have that much. We have a lot of burst and pretty good CC too. CC wins games, guys. If you never pick that out, <laughs> um, the only Tom Kinch is like one of the only exceptions I can think of. He doesn't have a lot of CC. He has some, but because he just saves, he cancels CC. It's like anti CC. I'm pretty sure Shin tried to ult somebody and that person died. So his ult should be down. Okay, good. Well, we're just getting like a million things on this. Alright. 
Okay, so Lucian's making good calls too, so I don't even have to make all the calls this game. So we got some good wards in the jungle too. Well, they're gonna start clearing them probably, but... Either way, that was awesome. That was, what, three, four towers and an inhibitor? That's a massive power spike. Um, go ahead and sell that. I'm not sure if I want the uh, Frozen Heart or if I want um, Gauntlet here. They don't have a lot of auto attackers. They have... TF's kind of an auto attacker, not really. Ash is an auto attacker, and same thing with Pantheon. They're they're all kind of casters. Now, and over the Fist gives me a little bit of extra peel on something like a Shin. Gives me a little bit of extra damage. The only real sin is to deny nice little slow field. We all go I'm really worried they're going to move on Lucian. Time. Okay, he's backing up. I was just kind of playing safety right there because I have my ult, so... Now one thing to keep in mind with Tom's ult, though, is you can't eat somebody for like five seconds, I think, after you ult. So you can't just show up, eat somebody, and run away. You have to be careful here, they put bear, they do have a ward. Okay, they're back. can just get towers, base towers, right? I mean... Okay, let's just get the... Inhibitors, it's fine. More inhibitors is better than more towers. Those base towers are nice, but... Unique. Okay, so just tell him good job, heal. Uh, Darius shouldn't have been there alone. That's okay. I had to burn my flash to save him, but it's fine. Um, I guess I'll just go for the Frozen Heart, because, well, I'm going to go for Frozen Fist. Just a little bit more damage. I don't think we need the attack damage reduction. If they die right there... Okay, take it. Nautilus, take it. He was watching the screen. Okay, that's good. Uh, I mean, there's a chance we could end it, but the timers are still really low. Like, they're going to be up by the time we get over there, so we might as well just... just drop my paint to make sure this is not working. No, TF and Shin are both in base, so... So that was a pretty dangerous game. So they had lots of globals, so we had to try to figure out how to combat globals. And honestly, we didn't do a great job of it, but we just had the raw team fighting power that they didn't have. Like, Lucian just had so much more damage than Ash. And, um, I actually got a Bloodthirster pretty early, which I think is unorthodox, but I like that. Because <clears throat> if he can just survive through the initial burst with the, um, Bloodthirster barrier, I think that, uh, I think he could finish out the fight. So I really like lifesteal. A lot of builds don't have lifesteal anymore. Um, I think it's common to go like 
what, Ghost Blade Cleaver or something like that. Um, but I personally really like the lifesteal. I think that it it can make a huge difference, especially when you're getting bursted or not, because it also gives you a nice shield um, for up to 350 damage. So, I mean, even if it's just 200 damage, that's still 10% extra uh, health. So, and plus it steals over time. So, I don't know. I like the lifesteal a lot. And what that just came down to a lot of times was just we had the CC and we just had better team fighting damage. So early on when they were able to move around and do what they wanted to do, it was causing some major problems. Um, but I think the brand really hurt him badly because he doesn't really have CC and he didn't really have respectful damage either. Let me see his graph here. He should like have the most damage on his team or very close to it. Because he, like, he, TF and uh, him should have, TF and he should have had the most damage. Like, by a lot. Because Brand just has so much AoE, like, you just press R with your ult and it hits everybody and does a million damage. So, the fact that Shen is getting more damage, I mean, what was Shen building to get that kind of damage? Almost, oh, he got a, uh, okay, he got a cleaver, that's a little weird. I, oh, no, that's not Shen. Shen wasn't building anything. <laughs> he just did that much damage naturally. Um, I guess with just his Sunfire, but yeah, this brand, I don't know what he was going for. Like, he got a tier, which is, you can't get that as support. He's, and he didn't have a, a Sight Stone. So that means they, that's why they didn't know when we were coming all of the time. Um, we were able to get good ganks on him. Um, yeah, he should have gone for more Burst. Like, if he wants to get a big expensive item, he should have gotten Ludens and just I don't know. I don't like Brand as a support right now. I think they've nerfed his um, his damage a little bit too much. Maybe not. I haven't played him since the rework. There was a time, I think, last winter when he was kind of popular for a while, but I don't know. He just he didn't bring any CC to the table. Um, Pantheon has very low CC. He has pretty good burst, but with my exhaust and my ability to eat people and save people out of stuff, he's just Pantheon's not really that strong. Um... Shen, is kind of, Shen doesn't really have a lot of CC either. I mean, he's got his taunt. Ash does with her arrow and her slows, but I don't know. They just, like, they didn't have tanks, really. Like, their only tank was Shen. Everyone else was very squishy. We had really high burst damage with um, Darius, Lucian, and Victor. Had a ton of CC with Nautilus. Even I could do some CC. Um, so we were just able to blow up key players. And their tanks weren't, like, massive damage tanks. So it wasn't like a trundle or something, it was a shin. So yeah, I mean, I, our composition was just way better at team fighting than theirs was. Like, they were good at picking people off early on, but once we made that play top to where we joined in, we weren't really necessary there probably, we should have probably pushed mid, um, but where we killed three people top, and then Lucian somehow 2v1 uh, the bottom lane, I don't even, how does that even happen? Like, he killed Brand and Ash by himself bottom lane, so, <clears throat> yeah, that was pretty solid. So Tom Kench, not great into that matchup, as I said early on. You know, he has a hard time against Poke. I should have gotten three biscuits instead of the refillable. I was getting a little too greedy. Um, but, as you could see, in the mid-game, it was worth it. I was able to save people from things. I was able to lock people up. Like, I was able to lock that TF out of the fight after he was on the back line. I could pretty much 1v1 the TF. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's it. I mean, Nami would have been a better pick with this comp, I think, especially into the brand early, but, <clears throat> I mean, Tom Kinch is always good. Tom Kinch is never bad because saving people is always at a premium. So even though, you know, we kind of lost a little bit of pressure in lane, it wasn't really that bad, honestly. Like we were down like maybe... 10 CS in lane or something, which is not great, but it's not awful. We didn't even really leverage my ult. Like, if Nautilus would just come bot and let me warp behind instead of running up the river like that, we would have had much better positioning. Um, <clears throat> so we didn't even leverage my ult that well. I'm a huge fan of Nautilus, too. Um, I may play him as support in the future, so stay tuned for that. But if they have something like an MF or a Katarina or something where we just need, like, 100% need heavy CC and they're just the rest of the team doesn't have any, um, then that would be a Nautilus game, I think. I like him over Thresh right now. 
I think because he doesn't have the lantern, but he has much, much more CC. So every time you hit somebody with an auto attack, it's a CC. Um, your E slows people. Um, and then, of course, you have the ult and his hook. So he just has way more CC than Thresh, but he doesn't have as much, um, I guess, multifaceted utility. So utility that's good in different situations. He's just very good at, um, at locking down people in CC. I like him better than Leona. Leona's a very similar concept, but... Um, it's easier to escape with Nautilus. And his CC is just more reliable. Like, when you ult somebody with his ult, they're not getting away. They can't flash it. It's gonna hit him. So, he's really good for engage. They did nerf his ult range. That was probably years ago at this point. Um, but, he still is quite good. In the jungle, in the top lane, in the bottom lane, I honestly don't know why he fell off. I, I mean, I know they nerfed his, uh, his wave clear a little bit, but... He still is pretty good in my mind. But anyways. Okay, that's going to be it for this episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, learning how to try to manage against a global comp. Um, you know, it's not... We didn't do it very well. We do, we still dove in too much. But there are a few places where we respected the global, I think. Um, but global is very dangerous. They had so many. Like I said, they had five. And that doesn't even include Ash's arrow being potentially global. So... They had a lot of globals. I think if they had a real support, like I said, if they had like a... What would be good with them? Like a Karma or something would be very good. Um, Nami would be pretty good. I think Karma would probably be the best. It would help these guys speed up and get away from us. Get away from Darius and get into the action with something like TF. They just need to... They need speed, so... I think that would have been a good choice. Um, but yeah, the brand kind of... The brand pick was a little, a little off because they don't really have like brand can be okay if you have a lot of stuff to complement it, but they don't really have a lot of AOE uh, damage. Like if you have a brand, a Mumu, or like a Katarina brand, or you know just something, but he just doesn't really fit with what they're trying to do. So I feel like he was a major reason that uh, they were having some problems that game. But anyways, thank you very much. If you enjoyed this episode, please check out the other episodes on this channel. I have an entire playlist of how to carry a support. Got a lot of Tom Kench, a lot of Nami. Um, if you want to see me try to play another support, just let me know in the comments. I'm happy to try anything out. It'll probably be in normals, but I think that'll be fun. It'll be a refreshing change of pace for a lot of viewers that come in to see, you know, my thoughts on other supports like Vagar, or I could try Brand out in a game if you wanted, um, or just whatever you want. But when I'm trying to climb the ladder, I'm probably going to play Tom Kinch a lot, and then also Nami a little bit, and maybe some Nautilus. We'll see. Um, but I just think in general, if you're trying to climb, you need to pick, you need to just find just a handful of champions that are really good, that don't get picked a lot, don't get banned a lot, um, and that you just perform very well with. And Tom's my highest statistical champion. I think I'm at about 55% with him. So maybe even more at this point. And I had been, like I said, earlier in the season before I had, you know, over 100 games with him, I was as high as, you know, between 70 and 90% for a lot. For like my first 30 games, I won a lot of games with Tom Kitch. But then just over time, that kind of equalizes. Um, so if you're playing something regularly that you have a 55% chance to win with, um, you're going to win a lot of games. So... All right, well, thank you very much. Hope to see you next episode. Uh, if you like the content, if you watch this um, video, check out a few more. Check out some more Tom Kinch videos. Check out some uh, Total War content that I also have on my channel. Um, also, if you're a student, check out the student video. I just wrote up part one to a um, uh, how to write an excellent research essay. So it just tells you how to find some really high-quality sources with some very simple steps that are easy to implement and will help you out a ton. And then I'm going to add on to that by also sharing how to actually read sources effectively because i think a lot of students you know think that you have to read everything from top to bottom left to right every word because that's kind of how we're taught in high school and that's just not accurate like that's not the best or most efficient way to read anything especially academic sources so we'll i'll teach you how to read effectively and use your sources um, in part two and then part three is going to be how to actually write the academic argument using your sources note have lots of real life examples for you as well um, to go through so stay tuned for that if you're a student can help you get much better grades um, and if you're just here for league i do league every day come back watch that if you watch a few of these videos you like the content on the page think about subscribing it makes a huge difference because i'm still a relatively small channel i'm trying to grow um 
and you know the theme is strategic thinking so bringing people in for the games everybody has a good time with that but then also offering some academic content to help people also use strategic thinking for education to get better grades in college to get those scholarships to get the kind of jobs that you want to get so uh, that's really the goal is twofold entertainment and also education um, so help me do that help other people find this channel don't forget that whenever you subscribe it also helps other people find the channel and get the same kind of joy out of the content that I hope that you get out of the content. So it really helps out a ton. Um, and I appreciate it. And so do all the people that find the channel because of your subscription, because of your likes, they appreciate it as well. So thank you very much. And I hope to see you next episode. Have a wonderful evening.